Hey, how's it going everyone? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 19, Surround Sound Mixing. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper and we'll get started. Okay guys, so we're about to cover two main topics in this video, so remember to take plenty of notes. Let's go ahead and start by titling our notes at the top of our page, Lesson 19 Video Notes, and go ahead and put two bullet points on this page around four or five lines apart, which is a good enough space for each topic. Now, we're going to go ahead and write bullet point one, which is going to be what is surround sound. So we're going to quickly go over that. And then afterwards, we're going to just go ahead and talk about some techniques to use while mixing in surround sound. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, so what is surround sound? Well, the most common type of surround sound will actually use six discrete channels of audio, five full range channels, and one channel which is limited to the low frequencies of the subwoofer. The end result is called 5.1 surround sound. So understanding surround sound is actually pretty easy. All you need to know is that each speaker channel corresponds to one speaker placed around the room. Now you have three speakers that are actually placed in the front. One's going to be on the left side, one's going to be on the right side, and one's going to be in the center. You have two more speakers that are placed behind the listener, one on the left side and one on the right side, and then of course you have the subwoofer which could be placed nearly anywhere in the room according to the desired low frequency sounds you're looking for. Alright guys, let's go ahead and talk about some surround sound mixing techniques. Now, mixing a surround sound is actually pretty difficult, so the first thing you want to do is decide your sound field approach before you actually begin your mix. This is so that you have a plan on where each element will actually be placed in your mix. The next thing you need to do is you want to go ahead and begin panning your instrument in the surround sound field. Now you have five speakers to choose from when you're mixing in 5.1. There's a center channel, you have a left channel, right channel, a left rear, a left, uh, a rear right channel, and then of course you have your low frequency channel, your sub, to go ahead and place all your instruments. So you have a lot more space to work with. You always want to go ahead and consider that. So there's always a great way that you can go ahead and space out your sounds to more than one speaker to make your sound a bit fuller. Now one of the funnest things about mixing in surround sound is working with automation because now you don't only have the option to mix left to right, you actually have the option to mix left to right and front to back. So this will actually help give all your tracks a little bit more movement and a little bit more life which is a lot more interesting to your listener. Now here's a really great suggestion when mixing in surround sound. Make sure that you're making good use out of that center channel. If you're mixing anything that has dialogue, like anything in film or television, you want to go ahead and put your film and television dialogue stuff in that center channel. Now, a really great suggestion for mixing you know, audio, music, is to go ahead and put your vocals in that channel, because it's really going to go ahead and push all that sound to the front for the listener to hear a little bit more clearly. Now, this last strategy that I'm about to share with you really depends on the type of sound that you're going to be mixing into this channel. Now, what I'm talking about is the subwoofer. So you want to go ahead and make sure that all your lower frequencies are going to be mixed into this channel in particular. Now, that this could be anything for, let's say, television movie like an explosion or uh, maybe revving up of a motorcycle engine or something that will have a lot of low frequencies. Now if you're mixing audio for music, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and place, you know, your kick drums there. You're going to want to go ahead and place like your bass sounds, like uh, any bass guitar or any maybe synthesized bass notes, anything that's going to have a really low and deep frequency. You're going to want to go ahead and set up in the subwoofer uh, so that you get the maximum sound and actually even the maximum feel for that recording. Overall, mixing and surround sound is very technique based. It may be very hard at first working with additional spatial options, but with the more projects you practice these techniques with, the easier these procedures get and your intuition will actually take over. All right, guys, that's all the lesson detail I have for you for right now. And remember to always try to find more information about your lessons online. And while you're online, don't forget to check out Music is My Oxygen for all the things that you care about in the world of music. And until next time, have fun, study hard, and keep your eyes on your goals. I'll catch you guys on the next video.